Finding food reinforcers. Um, to this day, Lily doesn't eat anything that's wet. You're gonna hear her growl. She still doesn't like having me there. This is our fifth day, and this is the first time she's actually gonna eat a treat. And she's gonna eat it in my presence. So I was very, very happy. I was finally finding, after five days, something I could use as a food reinforcer. Um, this was Temptations, but she would not eat... Uh, any other she would eat like the chicken ones one or two and go well this sucks um she would eat the seafood and fish variety if i cut them to have tinier pieces they wouldn't be a reinforcer anymore and so she would have gotten really full really quickly so it wasn't a good food reinforcer but at least i had one um and it's also really salty so they you feed them like two or three of these and they lick their fur forever because probably their tongue is full of salt so I did three of these like this, retreating. This is the fourth. I'm going to ask her, do you want another one? And this is the first time she actually comes towards me. And I'm half afraid right now of having my fingers go through the grate because I'm still afraid she would bite me. Now that I know her, I don't think this would have happened, but at that point I don't know her well enough to be sure. The other thing I managed to use as a reinforcer were kitten kibble and baby kibble wonderful they're dry so she would eat them they're very very tiny when she first came to me she would eat a mix of these with adult kibble when she stopped being fearful of me i switched her to adult kibble only and used the kitten and baby versions as um, reinforcers so really great target training this is the day before i found the food reinforcers this is the brush which is normally a step in the fearful to friendly process i'm not gonna make this a uh, required step anymore sometimes it was like a plaything. Sometimes it looks scary. Um, not all cats like to be petted. This is a stick. I wanted to try targeting behavior by with the reinforcer of me moving away, but it wasn't efficient. I stayed at it for much too long. There's a lot of just bad training in this. Um, but I, you know, we, we think I'll tar target training. It's the first thing I need. That. That being said, between trials, she would play with the little pipe cleaners that would hold or. Um, her cardboard scratcher on the shelf, so she didn't seem too stressed, but it just it just wasn't efficient. She would play with it. This is more play behavior than afraid behavior, I think. But I think for target training, you're better off trying to find a food reinforcer or a toy. This is the dog bird, so I'm thinking she. I know I already know she loves to play with this. So I'm I'm gonna reinforce by leaving, but. Caroline, you stupid you, she wants to play with it, look at her. So you've actually punished the behavior of having smelled the toy. So I really need to get my priorities straight. Look how happy she is. She's like, oh, I'm so excited, the dog bird is coming. So this is a, bi a bit of a better trial, but we didn't play for very long. Um, but I don't think it'd be good for target training. I would use this in just not growling at me and sending me nice behaviors. I can take a big step back, play with you a little bit. I am counter conditioning you to my presence by adding something that you like. And I'm still going to give you distance in the end. Um, so at some point I realized, you know, this isn't very... There's something wrong that's happening. The next cat, what I'm going to do is just hold the target very far away from the cage and just have click and treat for looking at the target and gradually move to going closer to the cage because this was like fearful to her. This is like, no, this is not fun. This target is annoying me. And at some point I realized, um, because we got to a point where we could do some target training and I realized there's something going, going on. And so we tried lots and lots of different targets and I did end up realizing that she probably was afraid of anything that looked like a tool in a human hand. And she would just stop. some of these trials, she just stops and doesn't do anything and fixates. And so I removed the target. Um, Lily was vetted in a net. So she was poked and vaccinated um, while she was in a net. And I think that counter conditioned her to fearing anything that looks like a tool in a human hand. Shorter sticks were a bit more scarier. She learned to target fine, but even when we generalized to my finger, it was a bit difficult. Paw training. Paw training. I love the way to train this with a paper. You can then fold the paper or cut it and make it shorter and shorter, well, smaller and smaller. This is her first session. This is the session she learned it. I did one or two tries and she just pawed at the paper, so I captured it and put on the camera then. And uh, it was really nice. She just came right next to my desk where I was sitting and we learned to paw on the paper. Um, you can then put the tiny paper on your hand and you can generalize to other objects. So I love this because it's very hands-off. Um, that being said, my hand 
coming towards her with a paper or more than that my hand removing the paper was something she didn't like and I think it fell in the category of she's thinking <laughs> of pause of st tools in human hands so we don't always know why an animal is fearful of something she's pawing at the desk um and sometimes we just will never know but when i realized that you've been vetted in the net it's probably tools in human hands anything that falls into the category it made me much better able to sympathize with her and not get frustrated with the training. This is a great target on my finger, wonderful. And then after three tries, she could become like, wait a minute, is that like a tool in a human hand? Bad memories, you'll notice that I removed the paper when she was farther away, and then I'm gonna treat away from the paper because when I remove the paper, she tends to want to attack my fingers. I say attack, it's not a big deal, but it's behavior I won't, don't want to reinforce. I mean, she wouldn't bite me uh, crazy and, you know, she wasn't a very aggressive cat, but she was very exuberant, let's say. Sorry for the labels. Um, and so my pa my paper is still there, and I'm like, well, I'm gonna wait because it's close to your paw. And then I'm gonna want to take it. Oh, I'm not sure. Okay, I'm gonna take it. So I, I needed to be careful with that. Um, you're gonna see it here. She's gonna meow a couple of times. I'm, I don't, right there. And she goes, I might bite you, you know? I don't like this, this is a tool in human hand. And this is fine. The, the nice pawn paper. She's happy to eat. She knows this. Oh, the, th that trial was okay. No problem. Um, I pushed it a bit because I wanted to get this on video because I knew it was going away. She was becoming... This is a nice target. No problem. I knew this was going away and she was getting better at it. But this is like, I'm not sure I don't like it. And um, we say cats are latent learners. Sometimes I, I feel they're like, oh, I know this behavior and I like the food. And suddenly after three tries, they go, wait a minute. Did I think it is true? Is this a stranger? Is this just a tool in a human hand? I'm not sure. So um, I'm not being extremely nice here. I'm pushing it. And you see here, this is a video. It's not frozen. <laughs> I sort of, Suddenly I would get a very frozen cat who would go, I really don't like this. So, and if my end isn't there, it's fine and I want the treat. So, target again, and you're gonna see a target where she's really not gonna be, I'm gonna say nice, but she doesn't like it. She didn't bite me. That being said, that cat had very, very good bite inhibition, better than um, one of my cats, who's just not good with that. Um, and the f f few times when I messed up, that's okay, good target. Um, carrier training, but the few times that I messed up, I, I had like teeth on my skin for like a tenth of a second. It was nowhere near causing pain. Um, so very good bite inhibition. Wasn't a cat that. And at, at some point she just also I, I became more aware of what she liked and didn't. And she would meow at me uh, in a distinct meow when she didn't like something. So this is carrier training when she left with her adopters. It went so well. This is something that I so strive to do. Um, next cats, I'm probably going to. Uh, add some trips in the yard or on the balcony in the carrier because when we came back from going uh, at my office in the car we had to work on it a little more because you know car rides aren't fun and now carriers mean car rides so uh, I need to work on that this is actually the carrier she came in with well the carrier I brought to the shelter and that she came in to my house in she's a big cat uh, this is a tiny carrier for her but she I mean, I, I trained it with a big carrier, but she went in this one, like in this session, it was morning, and I thought, well, why not? We're gonna try it, and it went so well last night with the big carrier, no problem. So I think this is, can also be, you know, a, a reminder to people who have to put cats in carriers all the time at the shelter. It's not because it's hard once that you can't train it again. This is like 30 seconds later after we took a pause. She decides, well, why not? And I'm going to reinforce small behaviors because we don't have a really, really strong final behavior. And I'm going to treat where she is so that she knows that I want to encourage uh, where she is right now. This is what I want. And door closing is also a step. But you see now she's not even trying to get out. She's really relaxed. She knows she's going to get treats. Grooming training is not something I'm very, very good with. I tried to um, listen to her a lot and I hope to be, become better at it. So this is a brush. I tried to, you know, stroke and then wait to see if she wanted to rub on it. She had a little mat on her right buttocks and I really needed to cut it. 
thankfully actually we trained it a couple of times this is me just with tools near her tools near her tools near her and i would have needed to have the comb in one hand and the scissors over the comb because you never cut with just the comb you risk uh, cutting the skin so it was two tools in two hands and that was a lot i didn't realize that at first but a lot of a lot of difficulty but the math ended up just going away and so we didn't train that as much but this is something i would like to do more uh train towel wrapping wrapping also and train ideally you know looking at hairs and highs but you need to have a relationship to do that also group training and math training that wasn't a very nice paw it was more like you have a tool in your hand i'm using a pencil here to remove so because i don't want to encourage her pawing or mouthing at my hand but um, group training, I feel, is something that was very valuable. In the beginning, I would just, uh, she was in her cage, and I would just play with my cats, and she would see me play with the cats from far away. Um, and at some point, I started group training. So she would see me, ask them to, tar to tra target my finger, and everything was fine. I have a third cat who we don't see, it was at the right of the white one. So she would see all of them pawing at the paper, pawing at my hand, uh, targeting my finger, and, you know, she's looking at them and she's probably like, well, they do it. And the lady doesn't try to catch them and eat them. So maybe it's fine. <laughs> so I really feel this helped a lot because, of course, they learn from one another. They recognize in others what uh, they are themselves doing. And she never got completely comfortable with my cats. But with a barrier or with the next clip you're going to see, it's going to be um, stationing. My own cats are stationing on their mats. It was okay, and I mean, I could let them be together in a room, but they, every time they came a little too close to her, they, she wasn't comfortable, but she could very well uh, give me behaviors when cued, when they were around. Uh, this is math training. She didn't get perfectly. I had to lure her a bit for the four paws, but the first two paws she learned great. And because she was very overweight, this enabled me to weight her on a scale without any restraint. I never picked her up. Her adopters actually picked her up and I was like, everything went okay? And we're like, yeah, sure. And after I realized that in her file it said she loved to be picked up, but because I made some mistakes earlier on um, with uh, petting her a bit too much and her telling me, wait, this is too much. We don't have a good relationship yet. Um, this was a really nice uh, nose target. Um, because I made a couple of mistakes, I didn't want to push it, but uh, the, with the adopters it went very well. So I, I could, I didn't want to weight her by putting her on the scale, I wanted to go to mat, because anything that ends off is much better. And so this is everyone, middleman doesn't do always a good paw, but Lily did it well, and she even learned to, to um, I-5 after that. So essentially what I want to be training is, yes, target training, math training so she can be weighted both of which target and mat enable us to move an animal around without having to pick them up carrier training oh my god so much um everything that's handling i'd like to do more towel wrapping um palpating and looking in the ears the eyes but this is very hard when you don't have a relationship with an animal and my goal is to make an animal good in like a month or two months maybe that's a bit short to be handling a lot it will depend on the cat also um, giving a paw, putting a paw on something, so great. It's a step towards nail cutting and it builds conf it builds confidence. And cats are usually very eager to, you know, put a paw on something or give you a paw. You know, it's, I don't know, it seems to be a confidence building exercise. So that's very good. Um, and build on that to see what else I can train. But this are, these are the main things I really need to train.